Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren Simpson. I am with the SPDC. I am joined today by my colleague, Mike DiDonato. Mike, how are you? I'm doing well today. And yourself? You're staying doing dry? Good. Yeah, yeah, trying to, right? I lost my voice last weekend, so it's slowly coming back. Good day. Yeah, here's coming Excuse back. me. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. <laughs> get us started on our intro and then Mike you've got some juicy stuff for us today so let me I do let yes. me get started <laughs> all, right. all right good afternoon everyone again my name is Lauren Simpson I'm with the SBDC we are a national program with over a thousand locations across the country and we offer no cost services to local small businesses we offer those services to you at no cost because your tax dollars have already taken care of all of our fees <clears throat> for the Los Angeles network, which is the network we represent, we have locations, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, the locations that we have are on the map in front of you, but I did want to mention that we serve the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and Ventura counties. So if you are within any of those counties, you are in the right network, and you can um, reach out to one of these center locations. You'll see that we are in Camarillo. Uh, Santa Clarita, Pasadena, Laverne, throughout Los Angeles, um, the South Bay, as well as down into Long Beach. <clears throat> and we offer no cost business advising. So that's why you want to get in contact with us. We have tons of free resources, of which include no cost business advising, as well as virtual trainings. Now, when it comes to those that business advising, you're able to sit one-on-one -on -one via Zoom or a phone call with one of our business experts. And we have people who have expertise in the areas of, uh, Mike, if they're trying to create a marketing plan or um, if they are looking to um, begin a business and want to create a business plan, um, or if they're looking to adapt their business or grow their business, we have um, a group called Access to Capital or the Ag Team that they should get in contact contact with. So we have a ton of resources for you there. And then when it comes to virtual trainings, we have tons of marketing, I'm sorry, not marketing, <clears throat> comprehensive workshops um, that you can attend, much like the one you joined today. But again, they range in a ton of different um, uh, um, focal points. So you're able to learn everything from going from being a construction worker to, a, I'm sorry, a handyman to construction, or if you're looking for the latest and greatest when it comes to social media and digital marketing. Please get in contact with us today. We'd love to work with you and assist you along your journey. By phone, you can reach us at 866-588-7232, or you can go online, smallbizla.org forward slash new client. Now, if you are reaching us and you're outside of our network, so that means that you are outside of the Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, or Ventura counties, please go to americasspdc.org forward slash find your SBDC. <clears throat> Mike, I'm going to stop the screen share. Quick housekeeping. <clears throat> For those of you who have joined us, let's put all questions into the Q&A, but let's make sure that we're keeping those questions on topic. We don't want to mess up with the flow of uh, Mike's mm -hmm. uh, train of thought. So let's keep uh, questions on topic. And then the chat will be reserved for any kind of commentary and or links that Mike may want to share with you. Uh, before you all ask, yes, you can access a recording to this session. We have a YouTube playlist that I'll pop into the chat. And um, thanks for joining us. Mike, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, Lauren has been extremely busy helping lots of clients with the LA County Economic Opportunity Grant. Perhaps, Lauren, you can put a link to that grant into the chat room and then they can reach out to ask any questions. But we're not covering the grant today. Okay. So let's just leave that aside. Uh, today, we will be covering employee laws and hiring challenges. This may end up being two weeks because there's a lot of information. We'll see how it goes. Um, so, with that, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And while I'm doing that, I'm interested in seeing who's attending these workshops. So if you don't mind, would you please put the type of business that you're in, in the Q&A, not the chat room, because they don't monitor the chat room. Because I'm, I mean, I'd like to see what type of challenges that you have in regards to this topic. 
Um, and if you do have a challenge regarding hiring or employee laws, please let us know. It's important. I appreciate that. So moving forward, there's a lot of information. Uh, Debbie Goldfarb is one of my colleagues at the El Camino College SBDC. Keep in mind, we have 200 counselors, Lauren, is that correct? I think that's correct. Yes. And we have people who are experts in many different areas. So it's not just the people you see on your screen. And take advantage of it. There's no cost to you. So what happened here in the past year? Well, we all, past couple of years, we know what happened. We got involved in the pandemic, and I see that Sunny is involved in HR consulting. So Sunny, if you have something to add to this conversation, I'd appreciate that. And thank you, Dr. Oyeka. We have the great resignation. Millions and millions of people quit their jobs. And that has caused huge pressure on the labor force, not just in this country, throughout the world. And it hasn't come back yet. And we don't know that it'll ever come back the way it was. And it's an employee market. Right now, keep that in mind. The balance of power when it comes to employees versus employers, who want to think of it that way, is it in the employee favor. And that's only going to accelerate. And where are the markets that got hurt the most? Leisure and hospitality professional business services, retail trade, healthcare. And this is not gonna go away anytime soon. So you need to be prepared to deal with the reality of what's happening. What has happened, what's happening now, what's gonna happen over time and find ways to work around it. You can see at the bottom of the screen, at 56% Gen Z are leading the quit. Uh, demanding the latest tech tools and modernization in the workplace. You have to adjust your thought process to what's happening in the marketplace, not just for customers, but also for the, for the workers that you want to employ. And so millions of jobs, there's 800,000 job, job open, huge workforce shortages, and lots of churn. Yes, you have to raise wages. Yes, you have to upskill and reskill. Yes, you need a DEI strategy, diversity, equity, and inclusion, if you haven't heard that term before. And yes, flexible work arrangements. You want to attract talent? This is the way to go. Now, we're going to be talking about a little bit more further on, and I'm not an HR expert. We actually have someone listening who is an HR expert, so feel free to jump in through the chat. Or, Lauren, you can unmute, unmute him, okay? It's Sunny. Uh, so let me mute forward from here. So where's, where's some of the key issues? Health services, professional and business services, trade and accommodation and food services have the highest numbers of job openings. There was a survey done by CFO Dye. Dye, 40% of CFOs pointed to talent shortages as a top business. And that was published as November 2nd, 2022. I'll, send you, I'll come back to you in a minute. Accounting firms are facing huge staffing shortages. More than 300,000 accountants and auditors quit their jobs. Sunny, you want to jump in on this? Uh, yes. Um, part of it is the, the generation doesn't feel like they're getting paid enough for that market, being the, the food industry. And a, a lot of the markets, they feel that they are underpaid for the cost of living in the state of California, which we all know is extremely high. So until minimum wage becomes higher where everyone can afford, you know, to live here, is is the they're just not going to work. But I'm, I'm my question is, I'm trying to figure out where are they getting money to live, <laughs> you know, um, cause you do have to have a job. So I don't know if they're exhausting their unemployment benefits. Uh, yeah, that, that right there, that is amazing me. Right. And <laughs> yes, unemployment, but the pandemic unemployment assistance ended a long time ago. Right. Um, so a lot of people have moved to, well, first of all, there's a great resignation. Baby Boone was just retired. You know, they have their savings. They've done it over with. 
okay? They don't need a job. That's a large part of it, okay? Uh, they're finding other ways. They're doing gig work. Uh, they're doing part-time work. They're, they're, maybe their partners are working. I mean, there, there are ways of handling that issue, but I, I know what you're saying, Sonny. If you don't have income coming to the household, then how are you going to feed yourself? How are you going to keep a roof over your head? Yeah, exactly. But people are finding a way to do that. Now, what's really happening is people don't, know, don't want to work for minimum wage. And they want flexible arrangements. Who can support themselves on minimum wage in Los Angeles? No one, right? So there was a study done by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Two thirds of Americans who became unemployed during the pandemic say they were only somewhat active. Now this was a survey conducted in May and was published on October 27, 2022, okay? Over half of those who lost their full-time job during the pandemic agree is essential to return to full-time work as soon as possible. Well, 26% say it will never be essential. And some of those might be people who've retired. Nearly one in five have opted their livelihood. 17% retired. 19% transitioned to homemaker. 14% are now working part-time. Maybe there are two people working full-time. And now they say, you know what? We only need one person to work full-time, okay? Um, almost a quarter say government aid packages during the pandemic incentivize them to not actually work for work. That's true but those aid packages are done and over with, okay? Young respondents between 25 and 34 are prioritized, listen to this, personal growth over searching for a job. 36% say they are more focused on acquiring new skills, education, or training. So some of them went back to college to up, upskill, right? Almost half are not willing to take jobs who do not offer the opportunity for remote work. Remote work is huge. Lauren and I, often I work from home all the time. And Lauren often works from home, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's the way it is. Now, obviously, there are jobs where you can't work from home. If you're in food service, you have to be at the location to prepare the food, okay? If you're in manufacturing, you have to be on a assembly line. But wherever there's possibility to offer remote work, you should be doing that, okay? Um, let me continue on from here. So let's take a look at some charts that came through the Federal Reserve Bank of Winter and was published through the conference board, okay? So the median wage group for job switches and job stay stayers have been increasing. Just look at the lines. Look at from 98 to 2023. Those who are switching are generating far more income for themselves than those who are staying, but even those who are staying are generating more income for themselves. So if you have employees and they jump and you're not staying up with the competitive wages, you know why, okay? And look at the labor force participation by age group, okay? The 25 to 54 group is in blue. The 55 plus is in black, okay? In 1990, the 25 to 54 led that by far, labor force participation. But now, no. <laughs> now it's very, very close. The lines almost merge, okay? That tells you something, that those who are over 55, those older workers that people sometimes discriminate against, might be a bucket that you can go to to attract talent, and there's a reason you might want to do that, okay? Sunny, any comments about that? Uh, yes. Well, that age bracket is definitely more stable. They've been in the workforce long enough and understand things versus the other, the younger bracket. They're more about how much can I make and can I do less? <laughs> All right. Older workers bring a lot of benefits. A, they have the knowledge, they have the skill, they have the confidence, they have the maturity, they're responsible. They're dedicated, not everybody, but in general, right? You don't have to train them. You don't have to teach them how to properly behave themselves. There's lots and lots of positive benefits to having older workers work for you on one of those. However, there's also some downsides. There might be some health issues, right? Um, yeah. Oftentimes, the children are out of the house. So you don't have child care issues. A lot of benefits. And they often serve as mentors to the younger population. Now, 
It used to be everybody wanted the 34 year old energetic guy, not woman, energetic guy with no kids who had 30 years of experience. I mean, that's what people wanted. You don't get that anymore. Okay. That doesn't mean this. You're getting this. Okay. Let me go down. So look at the ratio of job openings to hire. Huge issue, right? It's just, and it's only going to get worse over time. This is not going to go away. Baby boomer generation is going to continue to retire. There aren't enough Gen Z's million oils to fill the jobs, okay? And you're, it's going to be a very competitive marketplace. The balance of power is moving to, has already moved towards employees, not employers, okay? Percentage of respondents reporting jobs being plentiful. Jobs are plentiful. Anyone who wants to work can work. That's absolutely true. It may not be the job you want. I've heard of some horror stories where people take taking 100 to 200, 300 interviews and not getting hired. Well, there's something wrong with that story. Uh, maybe they weren't working in the right location, in the right place, whatever. But there's lots and lots of jobs out there. So anyone who wants to work can work. It may not be the exact job that you want, with the benefits that you want, with the salary that you want, and that's remote and flexible, okay? But the jobs are there, okay? Let's go down, which speaks to employers. Employees have to recognize this reality and understand that when someone comes in to interview and they're a good candidate, may not be a perfect candidate, may be an average candidate, you might consider hiring that person because you might be waiting a very, very long time or you may never fill that job, okay? Sunny, any comments about that? Yeah, I, I agree with what you said, yeah. Yeah, okay. So look at the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate has dropped dramatically. It spiked during the pandemic, we all know why, but now it's down significantly. This is almost full employment. Okay. That's our that's the reality we're living. In. Okay. And again, this is the unemployment rate by category, but this speaks to something. Okay. If you want to look for employees, you might want to look into the uh, communities which have the higher unemployment rates. African American community, below high school community, not Every job requires a degree. We've gotten to the situation where we say, you know, the person on the shop floor needs a degree. No, they don't, okay? The person in office needs a degree. No, they don't. And there's more and more people not going to school that choosing not to take on that debt burden. That doesn't mean that they can't handle the job. You give them some additional training, maybe you pay for their education, you might be able to grab those people. Uh, what are you seeing, Sunny? Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, some of the requirements for a job is to have a degree. And and you, you're 100% right. There are so many jobs that do not require a, a degree. But I think companies are still stuck on if they spent the time to go to school to get a degree, that means that they will be focused on what the job is but like i said nowadays a person that really wants a job they're going to do it and i agree with jobs should train or you know it's still you have the 30 days 60 days 90 days requirements depending on the company of whether or not that person can do the job but jobs should be offered without a degree i fully yeah, agree absolutely with and that's also true at the higher level so I often look at, because I have a finance background, I'm looking at jobs and, you know, they required MBA CPA for a controller job. No, you don't. Bachelor's, bachelor's degree is fine. So long as they can do the work, that's what counts, okay? So it's not just the lower level job. It's also the job that require higher level uh, roles. There's a shortage of CFOs. There's a shortage of controllers. There's a shortage of CMO. The C-suite has been devastated, okay? Those jobs, exist but the requirements are so high because companies haven't adjusted it that it's they, they've basically written themselves out of hiring hiring perfectly acceptable and valid candidates 
Don't do that to yourself. Don't set the standards so high that you can't hire someone that could be very good for your company. Uh, by the way, look at the age categories between 16 and 24, 8.1% unemployment. You might want to dip into that category. You might want to see if you can bring somebody along uh, that's 17, 18, 19, 20, that maybe is not going to college. Something to think about. Okay, so again, just more statistics proving the point. There's still recruiting difficulties at a high level. It's not going to go away anytime soon, okay? That's the point. We're driving it down because we want everybody to understand you have to change the way that you're thinking about hiring employees and recruiting them. There has to be a major paradigm shift, okay? So over the next decade, well, from 2021 to 2031, so it's 10 years, right? This was issued on September 8th, 2022. Total employment is projected to increase from 158 million to 166 million. That's a 0.5% growth rate. That's slower over the previous decade, but still it's significant, okay? And there are some adjustments here for COVID. So keep this in mind, the growth is gonna continue. People talk, talk about a recession. There might be one, there won't be one. That's not gonna slow down the growth in employment. So the com competition for employees is only going to increase. And we're not graduating as many people through um, college anymore. That population has just declined for various reasons. I'm now telling you know, people, if they ever ask me, we go to trade school. Uh, <laughs> Laura's saying, yep. Yes. Right, right, Sonny? Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah, trade schools. Because there's a huge shortage of the trades, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay. Then you're not carrying that huge debt. Right. So this is affecting a lot of countries, right? There's going to be an ongoing shortage of workers, and that's coming from the chief economist at, at Indeed. Indeed, for those who don't know, it is where jobs are posted. Okay. So people talk about cracking down on immigration. Well, how did we fill jobs in the past, especially lower level jobs? Through immigration. We didn't, we didn't have enough domestic workers. So cracking down on immigration only puts increased pressure on the job market, on, on the number of employees, okay? Look at this. The number of people of working age between ages of 15 and 65 will decline in the US by over 3% over the next decade. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that represents millions of workers, okay? And it's gonna continue beyond 10 years. So there was this thought that this problem was going to go away, you know, after COVID. No, it's going to accelerate. Let's see. So I'm just looking at the Q and A. Okay, there was just some uh, information in Q and A. I wanted to look at. Nothing you need to respond to. So, look at this: an aging population. Over the age of 65 is the principal factor of driving the decline in labor force participation. Okay. But the petition rate, participation rates of the 55 to 64 bracket is going to decline and they're going to increasingly stay in the workforce. What's the message? The message is go to the younger brackets, go to the older brackets if you want to attract people. That's the message because that's where you're going to find people. And go to the brackets where you don't necessarily have to have, you know, put down a degree for every job in your company. That's there's no reason for that anymore. Okay. So these are the industries that are most impacted regarding employment shifts. Okay. So leisure and hospitality is going to experience the fastest employment growth, while sectors member is hit hard during the pandemic. So now it's going to bounce back. Healthcare and social assistance is going to create the most jobs over the, this coming decade because the baby boomers are retiring and they're going to need health care and social assistance, right? Food services is going to have the largest employment increase of any industry, adding about over a million jobs. Who's going to fill that? Who's going to, who wants to work at a food service place for minimum wage anymore? Um, 
Then there's the professional business services expected to increase, right? Retail trade is projected to lose the most jobs because they're facing e-commerce. Comments, Sunny, about this? Uh, yes, I agree with, with all of that. Um, well, definitely we are not, well, I'm gonna say my mom is a is a baby boomer. So back when she was coming up, everyone got a trade. So in school, you learned how to type. Um, uh, my dad, they had me mechanics, you know, wood shop, yeah. all of that. And the U.S. has gotten away from trade, from from trades where they didn't. My parents didn't have to have degrees to get a job, and then they also had. They worked for a company where they knew their, their job was secure versus nowadays, we do have a lot of layoffs and they are, layoffs are expected for this year. Companies are, you know, are laying off a lot. But we, as the U.S., we, we have to go back to learning a trade. Yeah. And they're no longer offered in high school. So it starts right. there. So it's not even just, you know the age brackets and what we currently have we, we have to we have to go back to what we used to do right. which um right. even rop they've cut rop classes so like i said it, it's so many things that have been cut where the younger the gen z's could have training besides having to work in the fast food industry but you know a lot of things have been cut for them to get a trade but trade i definitely M for a trade because it's less expensive than getting a college degree. <laughs> right. Speaking of which, look at the screen. These are the highest growth trade areas expected over the next 10 years. Wind turbine technicians, solar, photovoltaic installers, derrick oil and gas workers, woodworkers, IV technicians, and commercial divers. Okay. These are trades. And if we're not training people in these trades, it's going to be problematic because who's going to service the wind turbines? Who is going to be the oil and gas workers? That means the salaries and benefits are going, are going to increase for these trades. If you have a young person in your household or a counseling young person, I would certainly encourage you to talk to them about um, going into trades versus taking on $100,000, $200,000, $500,000 and student loan debt. Okay? Yes. <laughs> right. Let me continue on. So what are the solutions that we might be looking at? Hire older workers. They don't need to be trained for the core functions of their skill set. There's no concerns about child care. They're mature, responsible, dependable. They can mentor younger workers with indispensable advice. They have a valuable legacy knowledge and know how to quickly resolve issues due to experience. Now, I'm not saying everyone that's older has this, okay? But oftentimes, you will find this in an older uh, work population, okay? Um, disabled workers, yes, they require additional training and close supervision, but many disabled workers have been shut out of the workplace for many reasons. And by the way, we have technology that can help disabled workers um, be productive in the job. So, and you're doing a good thing for society. So you might wanna consider hiring disabled workers where you can, just keep in mind the types of supervision and training that's gonna be required, okay? There's the Workforce Development Board. The Workforce Development Board is, there's numerous workforce development boards throughout the state. It's a state, program, they will pay you to train workers up to six months to a certain amount. Um, they have contacts with all sorts of populations seeking jobs, especially youth, and they have their own and numerous programs to connect businesses to workers. I've given the phone number here, okay, for the LA uh, region. It is something you most seriously should consider because who else is going to come in and pay you to train your own workers? and they will work for you to develop the training program, okay? So this is something you should seriously consider. Uh, let me move on from there. Job sharing, one of the solutions. 
remember, people want flexibility. They want to be able to work life balance and they want to be able to take care of the kids while work or engage in a vocation, a hobby and work. Okay, maybe do some volunteering and work. They don't want to be defined by their work. Okay, these are the younger population. So you can split a job, a full-time job between two individuals. They each have responsibility for success of the total job, but it allows them the flexibility to meet their personal goals while providing you with the same amount of hours and productivity. So it's something that you really might consider. In terms of employee treatment, I'll go through this. Obviously, you should foster supportive and positive environments, okay? Don't micromanage. Don't be overly controlling. Those days are long gone. You will lose people very quickly, okay? Provide encouragement. Adopt ideas if they're appropriate to further your goals coming from you. Talk to your employees. Ask them what they think. I came from the old school where I worked for a lot of very type A personalities with them. This is the way we do it. This is the only way you do it. If you don't do it our way, Throw that out the window. That doesn't work anymore, okay? At all times, show respect and sensitivity to their concerns. Whenever possible, allow remote or hybrid remote on-site work. Flexible work schedule, extremely important. That's what people want. Build community engagement. Workers like it when you're engaging with your own community, okay? Obviously, they want you to pay for stuff. They want you to pay for child care or portion of it. They want you to pay for health and other insurance. They want generous paid time off policies. They want profit sharing and bonus plans and other incentives. Perhaps you might want to uh, pay off some of their student loans. Minimize high pressure demands and recognize that employees are people, they're not robots, okay? Unfortunately, there are some people who claim that workers at Amazon are treated as if they're robots because they're walking literally at those big centers five to 10 miles a day to grab stuff off the shelves. And it, it's, it's insane, okay? And uh, acknowledge DEI behaviors. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, be sure that people are appropriately treated at all times, okay? So in the end, treat employees as you'd want to be treated. Anything quickly that you want to add to this, Sunny? Well, I have noticed that a lot of companies are improving their employee relations department. Well, with that improvement, it makes the employee feel more like family because you're doing more things either outside of work or within work. You're giving... Um, in and out may come for lunch, or you may have something after work where you guys meet up for team building. But a lot of companies need to start adding that because it, it makes the company feel, I mean, makes the employee feel valued. And that's, I think, is lacking in a lot of companies that the person does not feel valued for the work and the time that they spend. Great point. Yes. So what else can you do? There's automation. Uh, here you see a robot that can serve as a waiter. It costs $33,000 and there's more than one of them. There's a lot of these out there. So automation is coming to the workplace. I, I saw an article where robots are now serving as therapists. Because what do therapists do? They sit there and listen, right? Well, a robot can sit there and listen. And at some point they can also give feedback because there's artificial intelligence. Okay. And it's not just, um, you know, the situations like the server here. It could be accounting. All sorts of industries are going through automation. And this is one thing you can adopt. Now, the thing about robots is they don't complain. They don't file lawsuits. They don't take time off from work. They do break down and they need to be serviced from time to time. Okay. They can work essentially 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you want them to. There's no laws regarding the treatment of robots. Will that come when we have androids? 
probably, but not in my lifetime. Okay. Now, for those of you who have not heard of Chat GPT, it's an artificial intelligence. It's just taken the world by storm. Okay. It, it's amazing. There's lots of things you can do with Chat GPT. And now there's other platforms that have built on top of this Chat GPT platform. And I'm going to give you an example of what can be done. So I went to write Sonic, Chat Sonic, and I said, write a pay per click campaign for a toy store in Beverly Hills specializing in collectible board and card games. Lauren, you with me on this one? Yeah. Right. So, Lauren, how long would it take you to do something like this? Lauren's a marketing expert. To create the campaign? Yes. To write the okay. campaign. Mm -hmm. To write the campaign, that includes like cre uh, making the creative too, right? Like the graphics no, and everything. No, not the graphics, just the text. Oh, um, maybe an hour or two. Takes 10 seconds. For the AI? <laughs> Shoot. Yes. <laughs> maybe 20 seconds. <clears throat> okay. Wow. And look what it came up with. The pay-per-click campaign will be target customers within 10 miles. Of course, the more specific you get in your question, the better off it is. Mm -hmm. It determined a budget. I didn't determine the budget. Okay. So run on Google AdWords, optimized for mobile use. I mean, it gave you the description, the keywords, the yeah. ad copy, right? Look at all the ad copy here, how the keywords are to be used. And I feel your pain, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is insane. Right. Because when I go to write these presentations, you know, it takes me a couple of hours to pull all this stuff together. I have to do a bunch of research. Okay. Through Chat Sonic, I can get much of the information in, you know, a few minutes and then do additional research. And it's more than just this, it also generates images, it does a whole lot of other things. This is something that you can adopt to your own business. So if you have not been exposed to Chat GPT or one of the platforms built upon it, you should be familiar with it. I like Chat Sonic, Write Sonic, because it can also take the mode of a philosopher or a teacher or an accountant. Um, and it's and it's free. It doesn't cost any money. Now, will it always be free? Doubtful. Okay. So this can be productive for you. Sunny, if you wanted to write a job description, it might <laughs> yeah. take you an hour. It, exactly, and this this will probably only take a, a couple of minutes. I think uh, it wouldn't even take a minute. It would take yeah. ten to twenty seconds. <laughs> yeah, I think Indeed just started using it as well. Right. <laughs> so, what does that mean for you? You want ad copy? Typically, you'd hire somebody like Lauren. Or if you want job descriptions, typically you hire somebody like Sunny to write your job descriptions. Don't need to do it anymore. You might use it, run it by them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, because it's not perfect and you can't substitute. Like this webinar is over. It's over. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> no, you should always want to buy a human. All right. But I'm telling you, you want to save time, you want to save money, you want to get more efficient with the way you're with your time. Learn this. Okay. Um, we're going to go into some California laws. We, okay, we don't have time to do this. So, uh, Sonny, I'm sure you're aware there's three new state holidays, Juneteenth, Lunar New Year, and Genocide Remembrance Day. These are state holidays. That means state agencies are going to be closed. I don't know about the schools, uh, but I know that the state agencies will, will, will be closed. Okay. Background checks. I know this is small text, so there's a lot of information on here. What it comes down to, if you have five or more employees, you cannot ask about their Christmas, you can't do a background check about their criminal history. You can't ask about their criminal history until it's later in the application process, okay? California employers cannot ask about, look into, or consider criminal history at all until there's been a conditional offer employment. And this came into effect back in 2018, but many businesses are unaware of this law, correct, Sonny? Yes. <laughs> right. And after the conditional offer employee, 
employment, then you can look at their record. However, that doesn't mean you can disqualify them from the job because you have to prove that the crime, so to speak, is relevant to the job that you're hiring for. Okay? And so, and you have to inform the decision. This, this was a huge step, right? Because sometimes you had people who committed a crime when they were, you know, 18, 19 years old, and now they're 30 and you're going to hold it against them. It has nothing to do with, with the type of work they were doing. Okay? That's part of it. Credit history. So this relates to the ICRAA, which was actually passed back in 1975 originally. It was amended in 2011. And I still don't think employees are, employees are aware of this. So this is signed into effect by Jerry Brown, and it prevents most employers from using credit scores and credit history to make hiring decisions. You want to expound upon that, Sonny? Uh, in, in actuality, uh, employers may obtain credit reports, but it's, it's only for certain uh, employee categories. And most of them are with uh, federal or state laws or police officers. But uh, other than that, they, they should not be pulling credit reports. <laughs> right. So if you think you're going to pull credit reports on your employees, don't until you <laughs> check with somebody like Sunny, okay? Or else you're going to be evaluation of law. All right? Let me move down from there. Discrimination. This Fair Employment Housing Act came into existence in 1959, and it's been added to since then, okay? And there are a number of protected categories. I listed them here and they keep adding to them, right? So gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, you know, disability, request for family. All, all of these are protected classes. Pretty soon we'll have, you know, Martians in the on It's just the way it's going, okay? This is California. This is not Texas, it's not Alabama. It's not Georgia, not Florida. They all have different rules. This is all moving towards the favor of the employee. Keep that in mind. You no longer have the power. The state has the power and the employees have the power. You have to recognize that reality. And by the way, this applies to applicants, unpaid interns, volunteers, or an independent contractor. Not just an employee. Not everybody recognizes that. Okay? So keep this in mind. No discrimination, even if they're a volunteer or an unpaid intern. All right. And what are the fines? What are the penalties, Sonny? Do you know the penalties if they violate this? Oh, no, what? Not off, not offhand, but I know money. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be penalties. There's going to be monetary <laughs> penalties if you violate this. Yes. Right? And as you can file a complaint with the um, with the state of California. Now. This applies to all business practices, advertisements, applications, screening, interviews, hiring, transfer, transferring, promoting, terminating, or separating employees, working conditions, uh, apprenticeship program. It's not, just keep this in mind, this is a very, very broad law. You want to, you want to transfer someone? Let's say we want to transfer Lauren to Alabama. Lauren, you're going to be transferred to Alabama. Work for the Alabama's SPDC. And Lauren feels, wait a minute. I don't want to move to Alabama, right? And she's saying, you're only doing that because of my race. May or may not be true. She can file a complaint. And she, Lauren would probably win. Not that we're transferring. We love Lauren. Okay, <laughs> and we all have independent SPDC. Keep this in mind. Advertising, applications, screening, interviews, I'm repeating this deliberately because you need to understand it. Hiring, transferring, promoting, terminating, separating, working conditions. You can't have different working conditions for depending upon these protected classes. You can't. All right, minimum wage, 1550. An increase from $14 a 
or 15, depending on the company size, at the very first, 1550. No one, no company I speak to nowadays pays minimum wage. You can't attract workers. Sonny, are you speaking to anyone that's paying 50, that's paying minimum wage? No. 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 It's not real. Okay. Keep that, it's only going to increase. That means you have to increase your prices. Okay. Um, now, there's something called the pay scales and pay data law that came into existence on 1 1. That's B 1162. It requires companies that employ at least 15 people to include salary ranges in all job postings and provide them to existing employees upon request. I always say that when I was looking for jobs and you never knew what the compensation was, you know, dependent upon experience. That's done. What the state is going to is transparency. That's what the state wants you to do. So you must include salary ranges in your job postings. Uh, by the way, businesses that don't comply with the law, which includes reporting employee salary, sex, race, ethnicity, hours worked in job category will face penalties. And those penalties are significant. $100 per employee and up to $200 per employee for subsequent failure, okay? To a maximum of $10,000 per violation, okay? The new law permits, uh, permits the California Labor Commission to order the employer to pay a civil penalty of no less than 100 per employee and no more than $10,000 per violation. The state of California is taking this very seriously. You, you need to be aware of it, okay? You want to talk about harassment training, Sunny? Um, no, it, with a lot of companies are still behind on on that training that, um, and they need to catch up because, like you said, there are so many discrimination categories that companies need to stay on top of that because it it's any. It's almost anything. Any employee can state that they are being harassed about anything. But if the company stays on top of their harassment training, and I'm not saying I'm for the company, but that does cover them to say that we have done training for this year or we have initiated every time a new law or category is passed, we've done that training. But yeah, companies are still behind what from what I've seen on the. So keep in mind, if you have five or more employees, you're required as mandatory to provide one hour of sexual harassment and abusive conduct prevention training to non-supervisor employees. That's one hour for non-supervisory and two hours of sexual harassment and abusive conduct prevention training to supervisor employees every two years. Five employees are not a lot of employees. If you're if you're a husband and wife and a couple of people working in a, in a small store, you're you're required to do this, and many people aren't aware that it applies to businesses that small. Somebody asked for me to present to them a number for the Workforce Development Board. I have it here. Give me one minute while I go back to it to find it. I apologize for this. I'll find it later. Um, okay, let me continue on from here. There it is. It's the Workforce Development Aging Community Service. The number is 888-211-0644, 888-211-0644. They are on Vermont Ave in LA. Okay, let me continue on from there. Some background checks, discrimination, labor, harassment training, and more labor. So there was a bill passed and it became effective 1 1 2023 that creates a special council that will have the authority to create employment laws for workers at fast food chains with 100 more locations. Because those workers really want to unionize. And I saw there was a protest yesterday against Starbucks because Starbucks refuses to allow unionization, that they, they challenge it. Okay. There's another bill here that allows farm workers to unionize by allowing them to vote by mail. They, they couldn't do that previously. Okay. Move on from here. There's the California Privacy Rights and Enforcement Act, which amends the California Consumer Privacy Act. Okay. And this is 
big time for employers. You need to be aware of it. The several privacy related obligations for employers. You have to know, notify applicants, employees, and contractors about the categories of personal information that's being collected. Okay. You have to describe the purpose for the collection and disclosure. You have to provide information regarding the sharing, retention of personal information. Um, this is also includes employees' rights to access or restrict the use of their uh, personal information and the employee's rights to correct or delete personal information and employee's rights to request personal information. So if somebody comes to you, a contractor, and says, what personal information do you have on me? Why are you collecting it? Who are you disclosing it to? You must release that information. And if they ask you to delete it, you must do it. And the state of California is, has created a new agency, the California Privacy Protection Agency. $2,500 fine per violation. And you might have multiple violations for one worker, okay? And $7,500 per intentional violation, okay? And this is retroactive back to January 1st, 2022. What are we telling you? The state of California is in favor of employees and wants employees to have the balance of power. I keep saying the same thing in the workplace. And you have to adjust to that reality because that's what is happening. You can see it in the legislature. Let me move on. Um, another one, you can't discriminate if somebody uses cannabis unless they're in a certain uh, profession, okay? So there's an exception if they're in the, in the trades or it requires a federal background investigation because the federal government still considers cannabis to be illegal and the federal government can come in and shut down every cannabis grower in every state, put them on trial in federal court and put the owners and the employees in federal prison. Will it happen? No. Is there a movement in Congress to legalize cannabis? Yes. Will it happen? I don't know. Because the federal government is becoming actually more conservative, as we all know, and as, as is the Supreme Court. So I don't know if and when the federal government will legalize cannabis. Hard to say. There is a push there, though. Okay, The Contraceptive Equity Act. It includes a provision revising the California FIHA Act that makes it illegal to discriminate against an employee, another discrimination issue, based upon their reproductive health decision-making choice, okay? You can't discriminate uh, based upon what they're choosing to do. Let's move on. Safety, you can't retaliate against a worker who chooses to leave the workplace because that worker feels that there's a potential disaster or extreme peril to the safety of persons or property at the workplace, okay? Caused by a natural act or a criminal act. So this does not include a health payment, but you can't retaliate against a worker who's refused to go to work because you know, there's a potential for a hurricane or a blizzard as we just discovered, right? Let's move on. COVID exposure, I think everyone was aware that you have to post a notice in your workplace if someone has had a COVID, okay? This, this rule is still in existence, it's been extended for a year, but you no longer have to report it to your local health department. Leaves of absence, all right, so this new law affected 1123. This all came in January. The legislature was busy last year, and they're going to be even busier this year. Okay. Um, so they've added a designated person to the category of existing permitted family members when you when an employee wants to take an employment leave, okay, to take care of someone. So the extension now includes registered domestic partners parent-in-law, mother-in-law, father-in-law, a grandchild, a sibling, a brother, a sister, okay? This expands the California Family Rights Act and the paid sick leave law. Now, there is something called the California Family Rights Act that defines a designated person as an employee's blood relative as someone who the employee considers family. While the Healthy Workplaces, Healthy Families Act, definition of someone the employee identifies at the time he or she requests the paid sick days. So if somebody comes to you and says, 
I want to designate my brother as someone that I want to take care of uh, should they, my brother have a problem. You have to respect that and allow for that leave. Um, there's this COVID-19 supplemental paid sick leave that came into existence last year, and it was scheduled to expire in 929-2022. Uh, Governor Newsom extended it through December 31st, 2022. So we're now past December 31st, 2022. Uh, this has not been extended as far as I'm aware. Bereavement leave. You can't retaliate against someone who wants to take bereavement leave. Some people do this, but you can't, okay? But the workers have to provide proof of death that requires a leave. This applies, as in many cases, to those employees with five or more employees, okay? Uh, paid family leave. So you are required to provide paid family leave, and this extends the program by a year, all right? And it's up to eight weeks to workers who take time off to care for seriously a family member, like a bond with a baby, for example, with one year of birth or placement. And by the way, this starting in 2025, the legislation increased wage replacement rates for the family leave in SDI from 70% to 90%, depending on the employee's earnings. Now, there's something called the Employment Training Panel, which has a paid family leave grant program in place to help small businesses off that, offset the cost when an employee is out. And that can go to pay for cross-training existing staff, bring on newer temporary employees, and you can receive up to $2,000 under the grant. And this ends on May 31st, 2024, when the funds run out. So if you're in this situation, you should look into the ETP and apply for the grant. Cal Savings. This was put into place effective 1 1 2023. Every employer, I think it's five or more. Yeah. Actually, no. It used to be five. Now, if you have one employee, okay, you need to have a retirement savings plan in place for your employee in California.